Good morning, everybody. Star and Flurry coming at you on this gorgeous summer day in July. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. So I came on here because I just did a reading. And I have to share it with you because it's so cool. And it's making me think really hard about... Um, I hate it when my clasps are all weird. Um, it's gotten me to thinking about a situation... It's been heavily on my mind for a very long time. And I need to, I need to do a Taylor Swift and shake it off. Uh, <laughs> anyways, cheers, good morning. Nice hot cup of coffee. Fragrance of the day, a newly discovered one on my part. Elizabeth Arden, white tea. If you like fragrances, but are maybe around people who don't, or you're put off by kind of loud smells and you just don't, I mean, you like the idea of it, but you don't like the idea of wearing it. This might be one to think about. Um, it's so lovely and mild. It's like, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, it's white tea. I mean, it's basically just a, a kind of an odd comfort set, but it's lovely during the, the summer. It's just light and airy. Not, it's not going to put anybody off. I mean, you could definitely wear this in an office situation, I think, um, without pissing off anybody so anyways highly recommend um and then I had another story about scent memories I mentioned the last time one of the strongest scent memories I have is um with Byredo Val d'Afrique which is just one of my favorite fragrances it's very different um than a lot of fragrances and I think some people love it and others hate it but um I love it and I just I've always loved it and so when I went before my dad died he wanted, had always wanted to do an Alaskan cruise and visit, because um, he was instrumental in kind of putting together um, the financial fundamentals of the state when they were getting ready to become a state up in Alaska. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? 1951, I think it was. He was born in 26, so he was, you know, his 40s or whatever, 30s whatever I can't add on the fly but anyway so he was up there a lot and um and he'd always wanted to do a, a cruise up there and take the family so myself my brother my sister-in-law my nephew and my dad all went on this incredible Alaskan cruise and I decided to pick since you kind of minimum you had to minimize what you were bringing so I um I picked Byredo Belda Freak and um so, I mean, the, I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise. <laughs> oh, God, one's enough, I think, in my lifetime. I mean, it's, pretty, it's really cool. I'm really glad I did it. Dad was so happy um, to treat us all to this experience. But, um, uh, yeah, so the rooms are really small. And so Dad and I bunked together, and then Mark, my sister-in-law and brother and their nephew bunked in another room and that was my bad because they you know they were saying yeah an extra person is really cheap and I was like cool what I didn't realize is the extra person sleeps on the couch in the room and so that was my bad I should have gotten Robert or my nephew his own suite but whatever um so that was my bad anyway so beautiful cruise um so but one day I'm, I'm in the room and I just we were getting ready to go to dinner and I thought oh I'll do a little spritz of Belle de Freak and I you know how you, you do a spritz but it was just like a really large spritz, spritz. So it was not what I meant to do it was like I'm like oh dear and I mean the room smelled of it for like the rest of the trip and I felt really bad fortunately dad liked the scent he didn't I remember when he walked in he was like what is that and I go, oh sorry I oversprayed and he, he just started laughing and he goes it's okay I don't mind it so thank god for that um but anyways so uh, it's not a fragrance I wore. I, I wore it a lot and then I didn't. And then I took it on this trip. Um, and so every once in a while, before I would go over to make dinner for him or get together for the afternoon with him, I would spray a little of this on. And I'd walk in and the first thing he'd say is, Ooh, are we back on the cruise? Because he, he connected that scent with that as well. Which I thought was really cool. And it always brought a smile to his face. So I'm like, see... These kind of things are good. Scent memories are good. Um, and so and so now, even today, when I, again, I don't wear it all that often, um, a lot less now than I used to. Um, 
I couldn't wear it at all after he died because it just reminded me so much of him in a weird way. But now every time I spray it, I'm just transported into that cabin on that cruise and the sea rolling by and the glaciers and the, just the whole trip just floods back. So um, it's a great experience. Anyways, so my reading today, I'm just going to bring the camera down so you can all see it. So these are the, I'm using the Uncertain Oracle the Tarot of Mystical Forests and the Sacred Destiny Oracle. So the first one is, visit I'll just show these to you, Visitation. Treasure. And Self-Love. Am I blocking it? Okay. And then the Tarot cards are the Six of Swords. I just love this card. Oh, and I love the coloring too. And I find it so curious it's under visitation. Seven of Cups. Under Treasure, which I find interesting too. And it just, the, the color palette here is just stunning. And then the Six of Cups. Look the bunnies. Oh my God under self-love and then my three sacred destinies are voyage under visitation and under the six of swords wow success under treasure and the seven of cups and forgiveness under self-love and the six of cups and so my phrase for the day is a successful voyage begins with forgiveness and when i look at this um i don't know i just it's it's first of all i just love looking at it it's so pretty i'm gonna bring this up um yeah, so I've been struggling with a situation. I'm really good at compartmentalizing my thoughts, um, which is a good and bad thing in many ways. Probably more bad than good because it's really easy to... I'm the, I'm the epitome of the Eight of Swords. I mean, I'm just, you know, <laughs> Two of Swords maybe, I don't know, just blinded to everything and... You know, the more I struggle, the harder it is for me to get out kind of thing. But, I mean, my basically my story is that I um, had a friend from college that w we were very close. He was, uh, I can't, I don't, even, I don't even tell the whole story. But anyways, we, we were just, we were good friends for many, many years. And um, for many years. And then after he, I don't even know if he graduated. I think he didn't. I think he left school after his junior year. But I graduated and we stayed friends. But every time, you know, it was just, as I got older, every time we got together, um, it felt like he was correcting my life. You know, you really should do this, you should do that, you should act this way, that way. And over time, and we, and he, oh God, he, he debated everything. You couldn't just have a conversation about as simple as where do you want to go for dinner? You'd be like, well, are you moving for vegan or for blah? I mean, it would just turn into an hour long conversation. And that's just about dinner. You know, God forbid, enter politics, philosophy, any of that. It was just insane. And that was always kind of a barter with him. I, I, it's hard for me to reflect back on it when I wasn't aware of it. But he was a hard, I liked him a lot. And we got along very well. But one of the other things that I realized later that he would do is kind of glom on to some of the things I was doing and not only become part of it, but take it over, which at the time I looked at as help. But over time, I began to see that he was kind of eating up my ideas and taking them over and becoming in charge of them. Um, and I'm not sure why I was so 
happy to let him do that. But anyways, so as I got older, um, <laughs> it just... I began to get really tired of it. We would spend a lot of time on the... We'd have these incredibly long chats on the phone. He lived on the East Coast. I was on the West Coast. And uh, he didn't email. He didn't believe in email. And um, and refused to deal with it. And I was literally on the phone seven hours a day. So the last thing I liked to do to come home and and decompress was get on the phone. It's just like, no, you know. So... And and he used to give me so much shit about it, and I'm like, so he just didn't, he just didn't get it, he just and he didn't get it, wasn't empathetic, and he didn't he didn't really care. And I, I guess my thing was, what's so hard about email? I just I didn't, I I still don't get that. But anyways, so slowly but surely, our friendship just dwindled away, because um, we just had a hard time talking, and and it seemed like every time he did talk, he was like. Like I was struggling at work, I was having a tough time, I didn't like it all that much, I was frustrated at this at the time, not, it didn't last, that didn't last fortunately, I loved my job most of the time, but this was a period of time when I didn't, and um, and he would just say, well just quit, and I was just like, okay, I mean, yeah, your dad left you a million fucking dollars and you could do whatever you want or more money, I mean, he, this guy, he did, he spent his living, well this is one thing, like I used to blow glass, and I loved it. Uh, I had to talk my way into the class because I technically wasn't an art major. Um, but I talked my way into the class. I helped build the studio and I was allowed to participate and it turned out that it was a really good thing. And then all of a sudden, this guy wanted to come, this friend of mine, wanted to become, so he talked his way into it as well. And it took it over and whatever. And I, <laughs> I ended up leaving because I could never go in there without him there. I was just like, I'm, I'm done with you. And that's what he did for the rest of his living. I mean, he went back to the East Coast and built a glass studio and um, yay for him. And, um, you know, you know, wouldn't we all be so lucky to have that kind of money to, to do that kind of thing? Um, and, and so, but, but he, so it was so easy for him to say, well, just quit. And I'm like, I, you know, I'm, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I don't know, how, I mean, I found out, in, you know, I knew how he was living very happily and wealthily and yay for him. I didn't have a problem with that, but I had a problem with him telling me how I should live because he didn't understand paycheck to paycheck. The guy never worked in college, so I don't know. I mean, I worked almost every day in college. Um, not that my parents did support me, but I wanted a little extra spending money, and so I worked every day in college. And my friend never did. Um, so I don't know how he funded his life. And... But anyways, um, so he builds his glass studio and buys a you know beautiful property in upstate Michigan and um, and does his glass studio and does the festivals, kind of the boho lifestyle. And, and I think he did very well. I, I'll be honest, I never thought he was much of an artist. His his pieces were, you know, I, and I'm not I'm not criticizing it because we had a falling out, so to speak. I'm I just never thought he was all that good. I, I didn't find his pieces all that interesting, but that's just me. Um, but he made a living at it and glass blowing back East was probably as exciting to me as it was when I discovered it here on the West coast, which was, Oh my God, I, I've never seen this medium before. I love it. And it's really a cool, a cool thing to do. And I was so happy that I got two good years of doing it. It was really, really fun and really cool. Um, and my pieces were terrible too. So believe me, I'm, I'm in the same category, too. but it was really fun to, to be able to do that. Um, so anyways, he, so, uh, so, so, so slowly but surely we kind of, because I just got tired of him, you know, telling me that I needed to quit my job. Like I could just do that and, you know, do something else, do something good for the world. Um, and yet how was I going to pay rent? How was I going to do anything? And I don't know if he thought my parents would fund me. Um, but that was never, not the case. Um, you know, so anyways, so we just, you know, drifted off. And he would call every once in a while, but I, when I got home, I was just exhausted, and I didn't. I no, I'm not getting on the phone with you. You 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 wear me the fuck out is was the thing, and I just know. And so I just <laughs> I did the classic Aquarian shut the door. I was like, I'm done. 
Now, my fault was that I didn't really call and let him know. It's like breaking up with a friend. I mean, at that point, I'd never even heard of, you know, toxic relationships or break, you know, getting, I never even heard of that. Basically, in my mind, I was breaking up with him, but we weren't a couple by any stretch. Um, so I guess I just, at the time, didn't feel obligated to say, look, you wear me out. I'm tired of talking to you. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I just didn't know how to say that. Um, now, now I can, but uh, at the time, you know, I was in my what, mid-20s. I just didn't know how to say that. So, um, or 30, I don't know how old it is. Anyway, so he just would keep after me with these phone calls every six months or so. What are you doing? And why won't you talk to me? And I was just like, well, not talking to you is kind of my answer. <laughs> In my head, I was just like, I'm, I'm done with you. And then... At one point, he called and he said, not that you will care, but, and then he uh, quoted or talked to me about a professor that we both had in college. Another thing that he glommed onto in my life was a, a professor that I'd gotten to know quite well, and he was just a fascinating individual, and enter this guy, I'll call him Tom, uh, enter Tom, and he, you know, suddenly becomes best friends with this guy and just rips him out of my life, and I'm like, well, whatever. Um, so he calls to tell me that his wife that this professor's wife is um suffering from breast cancer and you know but he starts out the conversation not that you care but um i thought you should know this and i'm just like okay first of all it we've been out of college for how long 30 years 20 years um i didn't know her at all he did he knew her very well i didn't know her at all i knew her name um and i and i knew the professor but to start the conversation with, I know you don't care, but, or, or not that you care, but I'm telling you this. And I was like, of course I care. I, I, I would care about anybody I heard that information about. And, so, and why would you start a conversation like that with that kind of news? So that just pissed me off even more. <laughs> I was like, okay, I made the right decision. So then, um, and so then I move. And didn't leave, he had my phone number, but he didn't have my new address or anything like that. And all of a sudden, I get a fucking letter from him. And I'm like, oh. And I remember when it came to me, I was like, oh, dear God. Let it the frick go. I haven't talked to you in 12 years. More than that, maybe. Stop it. I mean, that's what I wanted to say to him. <sighs> so, anyways. You know, and he just kind of writes this letter. I don't understand, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, fine. And so... Now, and then something else that weighed on me as well is back in college, we attended a really interesting conference at Harvard, which is very prestigious, very cool. We got a little bit of a stipend from our college to go, but um, I needed help from my parents to be able to pay for a hotel and that kind of stuff and plane fare. I think, no, I think the school bought the plane fare, but we needed to accommodations. And somewhere along the way, I just ran out of money. And I, so I borrowed $200 from this guy, from Tom. And since I was always broke, I mean, I was just paycheck to paycheck to paycheck my whole life. I, I never got around to paying him back. And at one of our lowest moments, he was the one who brought it up, you know, said, you know, by the way, you never did pay this. This is after a discussion about how a movie paycheck to paycheck. So, so I was like, I know I owe you $200. You fucking have a million and a half in the bank. I think you're fine. And I understand. I mean, I get it. But he just, he hit me at my lowest. And that may have been the thing that I just was like, okay, now I'm done. So times have changed. You know, I spent, a, I lived, I had my, oops, I knocked the card down. Hold on. Um, and so I, um, I thought, fine, I'll write you back. And I'll tell you, the, you want to know the truth? I'll tell you the truth. And by the way, so I took that $200 and I added a reasonable interest rate to it and it ended up being $980 that I ended up paying him back. I wrote a check. Here you go. And, um, you know, thank you for letting me sit on this for so long and I apologize for taking so long to get, get this back to you, but thank you for the loan. And, um, of course... And then, I, and I, then I said, you know, I just, you wear me out. I can't negotiate with you anymore. It's just, it's not going to happen. I just can't. Um, and, and I, I loved you for a very long time, but I just can't deal with you. And I, I mean, I said it more gracefully than that, but anyways, 
sent this off to him with the check and thought that would be the end. said, so basically, please don't contact me again. Or I didn't say, I don't think I came out and said directly that, but I said, that's why this is over, you know, kind of. I felt like I was breaking up with a boyfriend when I wasn't. Um, and then, of course, he writes back, kind of, sorry, I didn't realize that, sorry, you know, which was appropriate, I thought. But then, <laughs> and he even says at the top of the line, I'm really sorry, it must be hard to deal with, blah, 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 blah. But, um... I really, I, I don't want to accept your check. I mean, I don't want to accept a check for more than $200. So what are we going to do about that? And I said, you know what? It's, it's what I owe. So, and, and after being many years in debt and paying back debt, I wanted to pay this debt. So I said, look, um, just cash a check and take, you take the 200 and you take the 700 and give it to, he, he's really into animals. He said, give it to a local animal shelter or the Ukrainian relief fund or whatever, I, you know, I, it's, that's up to you. It's your, your money to decide. So the next letter I get back is, well, I was, you know, rather than that, um, I was thinking maybe donating it to this professor that we shared. Um, he r runs a school um, in Portland or is on the board of directors or some project within a school. I, I don't know the specifics, but... He said, well, is it okay? what, if we, what if we donate to them? And I'm like, fine. <laughs> Sounds like a worthy cause. And all I said in the letter was, please don't put me on any mailing addresses with there. I was, I, I'm at that age where I just don't want to be on any more mailing addresses. Just doing anything on the internet puts me on 10 a day, I'm sure. So it was just like, don't, don't put me on the fundraising list, please. That's all I said. But otherwise, I said, yeah, that sounds great. Good. I'm glad it goes to a good project. So then the next letter I get back is the check. And he says, it sounds like you have better things to do. And it was like, I think somewhere in the letter I was like, yeah, don't put me on even a mailing list. I'm, I'm currently um, in a big uh, fund, funding project with Portland State University and then something else. And I just don't want to be on any other lists. And, uh, and so he goes, it sounds like you have other interests uh, for your money, so here's your check back. And I'm like, and here we go again. The fucking negotiation begins. Well, it began three letters ago, but here it is again. And I'm like, you know what? No, we're not, uh-uh. Not doing that. So I went to the bank. I got $200 in cash, stuck it in an envelope, and I wrote a check for $1,000 to this project of, of our professors and got that done. And then I wrote my friend back and I said, since you didn't, I have. I've donated the money to this project. Here's your $200 in cash. Please don't send it back to me. Don't me make me beg to pay you back. And this is what I'm talking about. Oh, one of the things he said in that letter was, I think maybe, uh, I think maybe you don't understand what your real interests are and desires are so that's why i'm gonna send the money back because i don't think you're really interested in this project and i'm like who the fuck are you to tell me i agreed to it i felt it was in my head it was more your decision than mine and i'm fine with it but once again he's saying i'm not really sure you you know know what you think and i'm just like and, and that was that was a catalyst that brought it all to me is that um, and I don't think he consciously says, oh, Nancy, oh, yeah, she's an idiot. I don't think he consciously thinks that. But that's how he treats me. You don't know what you think. You don't know what you believe. You don't stand up for yourself. So let me tell you how to stand up for you. Let me tell you how to do everything. And I was like, no. Now we're done. And so I sent him the 200 bucks, and I said, and you know what? When I wrote, this, when I began this letter, I wanted to tell you why this pisses me off so bad. But now it just reminds me why I walked away to begin with. And I said, but the lesson I have learned is that I'm going to tell you that I'm walking away and why I'm walking away. Uh, because clearly this is just you. Everything I said in that letter, I, you know, I, I didn't think I was going to change him, but I just expected him to be more mindful of it. No. Same habits, same shit. And I was so, it came back so fast in my head. 
that I was just like, I'm done. So I did that, sent the letter off, and I haven't heard from him since. So, good. And yet, in my head, he's gotten the last word because, you know, I guess in my head, I expected him to write a, I'm sorry, have a great life. You know, something ending. But no, nothing. And I remember getting a reading shortly after that where somebody said to me, whatever's going on here, they, they are not going to respond to you and that's their way of strong-arming you. That, that, that they know that that's leaving this hanging and that's exactly how they want it. I was like... Okay, fine, whatever. But it's stuck in my head. Like the Eight of Fucking Swords. It's just in there. Just looping. You know, who's the asshole in this? Now now I feel like I'm the asshole. And I'm like, but I'm not. I am not. Anyway, so it's been looping in my head forever. And slowly but surely over time, I've been thinking, I just need to fucking forgive him for being the person that just doesn't get it with me. I need to forgive him for that because I was just so pissed at him. I've been pissed at him for eight months, maybe even longer. And it's like, and so I've been toying with that idea and I am just, I, in many ways, I'm a lot like my dad in that regard. It's like, you could never really talk him into anything. You had to introduce the idea, you know, and then let him mull it around for a while, introduce it again, let him mull it around a little bit longer and eventually he might come up with it on his own. And I, <laughs> and now I'm doing that to myself. It's like, so... You know, you need to, you need to, you need to, you need to just forgive him and walk away. And so the question in my head is, do I need to write him a note saying that? And I don't think I do. We're done. Um, uh, I, I just don't think I do. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm over it. But so the void, the successful voyage for the rest of my life begins with forgiveness. And I think... That's the realization I've come to. <sighs> These things are hard. These things are really hard. And I don't, I don't like, I'm not good at ending relationships because it's generally not, and this is the deal, I guess, maybe I'm talking off the top of my head here. So, um, but maybe that's the hard part is that, um, you, that most of the people that b boyfriends, for instance, that I broke up with, I still really liked. We had, you know, I never fought with somebody so hard that I left or was left. You know, it was always just a kind of a a wandering off, a, a going different directions, whatever. Um, and the hard part was finally kind of saying that to each other. Do it, you know, kind of like I think I told that story well back. I was like, are we done? <laughs> um, yeah. But when it's a friend, and always has been a friend, and you feel that over time, when you were younger, you were really taken advantage of over and over and over again. And then tr and treated, I said this to him, you always treat me as if I'm lesser than. I'm not as evolved as you, you know? Um, and that, he, he, he would do it in the most minute, in piercing ways, almost, you know, almost like a, just a pinprick that you didn't know, you know, you kind of flinch, what was that? And then you move on. But there was a point at which there were so many of them that I was just, I'm done. And, that, and I think that's what's made it so hard to forgive is that I'm pissed. I'm pissed that I gave him as much time as I did. I'm pissed that he took so much of me. So I'm pissed. So I guess the, well, I mean, this is telling me to move forward with forgiveness. But in my head, you know, I mean, do you have to? Is that required? To, you know, I always hear, you know, the only way to move forward is forgiveness. I'm like, is that true? Is that really true? I don't know. You know, I'm not convinced it is. I mean, I know this is, you know, I'm, there are people that have many deeper angers and frustrations and reasons to be to be really mad at somebody and be in a situation of forgiving or not forgiving. And mine is a very mild case. I mean, it was just a friend. 
but it weighs on me. It weighs on me heavily. And it's, st again, as I said, it's still looping in my head after all this time. And I feel like I need, I need some kind of closure, but I'm not sure what that closure is. I mean, I don't think I could just say, okay, I forgive you. And then everything's fine. I, do, I, I don't, I don't feel that that's the, you know, but maybe forgiveness isn't something you can just say and have happen. Maybe it is kind of the process I'm going through now where it's just letting it, you know, mull in there. And, and the longer it goes, the less angry you are. I mean, is that part of it? You know, are you willing to open up that forgiveness door just a slightly little bit? And your mind, you know, slowly but surely starts to open that door wider and wider and wider. You know, to the point that someday you'll just, you'll not even think about it. I'm kind of hoping that's that's the direction I'm headed. So, that's Nancy's story on <laughs> forgiveness and what do you do? But anyway, so I'm just going to show this one more time. This gorgeous spread. Visitation, treasure, self-love. Six of swords. Going from craziness to calmer waters, a voyage. And I almost think like the visitation is the, the, the constant kind of the, the looping in my head. It's, it's, it's there. It's constant. It's a visitation constantly. And then the treasure is that there's, there's success. I mean, you, you've, you've got, you're in charge. You've got choices. Um, all the glitter is not gold. And you just need to, you know, look within. I mean, look at these eyes here and then the eyes on this card. Oh, my God. Can you see that? The eyes of the the eyes of the eyes tiger right there. Ooh. Um, maybe it's really just, you know, understanding that. And then the six of cups and the self-love and the forgiveness. It's like you don't have to lessen yourself. By embracing forgiveness. Forgiveness is not... What's the word I'm looking for? Is not letting them off the hook. Is that the word I'm looking for? I think that, that, I think that is exactly the word, I'm, or the phrase I'm looking for. Just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that you can't remain angry at them, pissed at them for taking a piece of your life. A lot of your life. I mean, it doesn't mean that you can't remain angry at them. You just have to... I mean, I guess in my head, and I wrote this in the letter, that this is just who he is. And who he is just no longer gets along in my head with me. And so, that's him. I mean, I can't change him any more than he can change me. So forgiveness allows me to step away from it, him and the situation in my heart and in my head. But it doesn't mean that I can't still be really pissed off at him. <laughs> oh, God. Is that what this means? I guess. I, I feel better about talking about it at least. Thanks for the therapy once again, YouTube. Always appreciate it. Anyways, I hope you're all having a great day. I think that's it from here. Star Flurry out.